everyone. So I'm here at the house. I have been busy working away. I'm covered in paint. I'm covered in slivers. Uh, <laughs> and it's just been, uh, as usual, a lot of work, but we're getting very near to the finish line. So I thought I'd take an opportunity to log on and try and answer some of your questions and really just reach out and say hi. So as you're logging on, so hi, Jamie Dodger. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Evan. Uh, Jalco Black, Maureen. Hi guys, as you're logging on, I'll try very hard to uh, answer your questions and go. Uh, I've been kind of down here by myself the last few days, going a little bit crazy, not gonna lie. Uh, but I have had <laughs> uh, some visitors come by. I've had some local people helping on the home. And um, really, it's, uh, it's transforming. It's, it's just about done. In fact, I'm supposed to have a realtor come by and have a look at the property tomorrow, but I might have to cancel because I'm really worried that, um, really worried in fact that, um, well, I'm not gonna have it basically ready for pictures. So I'm gonna work my butt off tonight and get it as close as possible. Um, so hi to all you guys that are just joining us live here today. Oh, hey, thanks Peyton. Um, so the goal today is really just to chat with you guys uh, and to talk back and forth a little bit and say hello. Uh, what happened to my thumb? Uh, well, hang on. It, it had a little bit of an accident. Um, I was painting, staining, and um, and doing all kinds of stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I've been busy working away out here today. It's been a long day, and it's my sister Heather's birthday today. Um, so she is, uh, yeah, I, I never asked her. Well, I guess, you know, I don't know what she was up to today, but I talked to her this morning. So if she logs on, if Heather O logs on, I'll know that's my sister saying hi. Uh, Pat, I, I look tired, man. Yeah, I always look tired because by the time I usually get around to doing a live feed, it's the end of the day and I'm completely burnt out. Um, like the end of a candle, it has one last little spark and then that's it, that's me right now. Um, so this has been a pretty uh, eventful week. Um, I am trying very hard to uh, convince <laughs> the banks that they need to give me some money so I can get another building. And that is what the next um, series would be, uh, us buying in a, a hundred year old general store and replicating it as though time has stood still and making it into my antique store. We have an antique store right now, but uh, I think it'd be really cool to have in a general store. So I am trying uh, very hard to rustle up the cash to do that. Uh, and hopefully that'll happen before long. Hey, Kate, nice to see you there. Um, yeah, it's been basically, I got up at six this morning and uh, the first thing I did is I scared myself half to death because Pickle Rick was standing there <laughs> uh, as usual. And I'm alone in the house this time. So like, you know, you really don't expect to see another human figure. So I got up, uh, ah! so I had to put him in another room today because it's freaking me out. Uh, somebody's saying, oh, uh, thanks very much. appreciate that. Uh, we are, what am I doing today? I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I'm talking to you guys, which is cool, and saying hello. Um, let me see. The last few videos I put up, uh, one was kind of exploring. Um, one, I did a, a couple songs that I put up online too, <coughs> which I'm going to try and convince Patrick uh, to maybe do a duet with me at some point. I think he's up for it. So maybe we'll do uh, Whiskey Lullaby or something like that. We shall see. It's up to him. Hi, from Scotland. Home of Haggis. I've never had haggis before. See, there's some Scottish people on there. Um, being in Canada, I wouldn't say that Scotland is known for its fine cuisine. Mind you, neither is England. I guess maybe roast beef is kind of like fine cuisine, but when you start taking intestines of animals and then refilling it and then serving it up, I don't know. Maybe uh, those of you in Scotland can, uh, can explain to me exactly what haggis is, but for me, it never really seemed appealing. Maybe it's delicious, I don't know. Um, I've never eaten tongue either. I don't like the idea of eating, uh, eating something that could taste you back. It just seems wrong. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to, you know, do that. Oh yeah, it's Josh's birthday today too, for all of you, uh, that are watching. Uh, hi, New Zealand. Hi, Space Seeker. Nice to see you guys. Um, so, uh, somebody in Deutschland is saying hello. Guten Tag von Canada. Hello in Deutschland. Um, yeah, other things I haven't eaten, well, probably any food that's come out of this house. I found um, a bunch of blueberry preserves um, in, next to the uh, porch. We were doing a little deconstruction on the other porch today. A little spoiler for the next episode. There's been some more, oh man, we have such a trash pile going right now outside again. It's gonna be like another ton of garbage. I can just feel it, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, underneath the porch, there was a whole bunch of uh, jam. And I don't think I trust it. I think it would be pretty 
be sketchy if I want to catch all the old timey diseases. You know, I might be, I might be immune to all sorts of stuff now. Like whatever I put my body through by being in this house, I've probably just boosted my immune system so much that maybe I'm invincible. I don't know, maybe, maybe I could, you know, they'll have to use me as a test monkey to see if I'm, uh, you know, maybe resistant to all sorts of diseases. Oh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, many dishes include uh, toad in the hole and beef wellington. Yeah, I, I know beef wellington's a fancy English dish, I don't know. I, my family hails from England. Uh, if I went back far enough, we were American, and then before that we were English. And it's funny, he's on my great-grandfather, great-great-great-great-grandfather's grave. Um, he got buried in, in uh, <laughs> Detroit. Uh, I don't know why I laughed, I thought Detroit. It just always seems like, you know, like of all the places that I want to go visit, Detroit's not high up there. Actually, you know, I shouldn't say that. I do want to go see Detroit because I think Urban Decay is really cool, and I'm a car fanatic, so it'd be really cool to go to Detroit. Um, I guess, I don't know, maybe if anybody's watching from Detroit. Is it safe? Is it not? I don't know. Anyway, my great-great-grandfather is buried out near the airport in Detroit in a little uh, town just out by the airport, which I can't remember the name of it. But on the headstone it says, proud English citizen. Like, what a what a slap in the face, you know? You get buried and you're the first guy to land in the, in the US and then uh, you put proud English citizen on your tombstone forever and ever. But I think I'm gonna go visit the guy's grave. I think it'd be pretty cool to see. And also find out, you know, what he did and where he lived. It's pretty neat. Um, so I am uh, just kind of gonna go through here and uh, I'll try and moderate a little bit, a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't know if Detroit's safe either. I don't, I don't mean to, um, you know, I've, I've never been. So who, can, who am I to say? But I have been to Colorado City, and I've been to New York City, and I've been all over the place. Uh, well, I don't know, those are two places at least anyway. Uh, hi in Denmark. Come to Detroit for the world famous w Woodward Cruise. I don't know, somebody's have to describe that to me. Yeah, I, somebody says don't go skulking around in Detroit. Um, hey, I had, uh, man, it's been, a, it's been a crazy week this past week. I've had a few television networks um, getting in touch with me the past week. I'm really reluctant to sign on with any kind of TV network, I don't know. We'll see, um, but you know, it's it's funny. We just, we like the YouTube thing. We're having fun with it. Um, oh, thanks, Steven. Um, Melissa, my wife is also just starting to um, uh, up her own YouTube channel too. And I know she was working tonight on trying to get another upload done. She's mainly doing a vlog from the family and, uh, and trying to do that. Yeah, somebody said, don't go to TV, be your own boss. That's exactly how I feel. Right now I get to do whatever I want. If I want to buy a house full of stuff, I'll buy a house full of stuff. If I want to go and, build a general store, I'll build a general store. Um, I think the challenge is when you get into a TV network, they want you, could you imagine if I had to cram this whole um, Potter House series into one hour episode? It would be absolutely nuts. Um, you know, it's just, it would be crazy. You wouldn't be able to get through. It would be like, um, Alex bought a house. Oh look, what's inside, some stuff. And he now doesn't have the house anymore. The end, an hour later, and then you miss the whole story and they probably cut out all the stuff with Mary. It's you know, I think you miss a lot of great stuff, but we are, uh, I don't know, people really watch TV too much anymore anyway. I feel like a lot of people are online. It uh, feels like a lot of you guys are online too. Uh, let's see. Um, Ever Somebody's asking if he's in the Evergreen Cemetery. What is the name of the cemetery where my great grandpa is buried? It's a town right by the Detroit airport. I can't really even think of it. Isn't that bad? I had it, uh, it's it's on the tip of my tongue. It'll come to me later, probably when I'm sleeping tonight or going to bed, I'll be lying down. It'll, oh, that's the name of it. And that's usually what happens to me. I always get my, my best ideas are when I finally have five minutes to myself and there's silence and I go to bed and then all these ideas come rushing to my head. Um, so, and I really appreciate it. By the way, I really appreciate all you guys watching the channel. Um, we are, um, you know, really thankful and very grateful for all of you guys um, that have decided to stick with us and watch. It's been a really fun, exciting adventure. And uh, yeah, Mickey Mo. Yeah, my hair's a little crazy today. I was out burning stuff outside. Oh, Wayne, Michigan. Thank you, somebody said Wayne, Michigan, that's it. Now I don't have to go to bed and dream about where my ancestors were from. They lived in Wayne, Michigan. Um, what, so somebody asked earlier, and I'm gonna try and answer them. Um, what are What is left to do in the house? Okay. Um, What's left to do in the house? Well, the inside of the house, there's not really a whole lot to do. Look, I'm actually relaxing. Well, that's, I don't know. That's not how I relax. I don't relax and go, whoa, that's not how I relax, but I am relaxing. 
Uh, I don't know why there's big hand gestures when I talk. Anyway, I'm a hand talker. Um, I'm relaxing in my house. I'm in my living room, which has furniture. I decided I really didn't like some of the stuff in the house. I mean, we were really trying to do this on a budget, so I, the idea was to repurpose it. But those mid-century modern chairs were in the front hallway were pretty, I don't know, they were run down. They, they were mid-century chairs. They were worn out in the 1950s, so they were worn out MCM chairs. So those things um, will probably go. I know some of you don't like the curtains. Um, I felt like the walls needed something. Apparently, I'm not a normal person. So I, <laughs> if you haven't noticed, I'm not normal. Uh, and I was trying to think of a different color or something to do with the curtains. And so I did the black and white. I might change that up because all y'all are saying the curtains um, are not the best thing in the whole world, but maybe I'll keep the curtains in the living room and do something different in the dining room. I So here's the plan. Um, okay, couple of thing, a couple of things. Uh, oh, I didn't even answer the question. Somebody's like, what, what's left to do in the house? And I'm all like, blah, 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 and I'm not answering anything at all. So the, uh, everybody's like, ugly curtains. Okay, I get it. People don't, some people like the curtains, some don't. Um, I have to do a little bit of repair upstairs. Oh, thank you guys, thank you, Heather. Heather, my sister can't, you can't give me five bucks, my own sister, that's not right. I'm gonna have to give that back to you. I'll have to buy you lunch or something when you get out here, you brat. My my sister, my she's not, she's new, I always call her my new sister. My new sister, like I went to the sister store, she's on right now. So everybody, it's Heather's birthday, so everyone say happy birthday, Heather, because she's on right now. Um, I have to repair a tile in the bathroom upstairs. Um, I have to do uh, a couple transition strips, uh, maybe another coat of clear in the washroom downstairs so the floor is nice and sealed. Uh, clean up the laundry room. And oh, you guys aren't gonna believe this. Hey, you wanna go on a little field trip? I'm in the house right now. You guys up for a field trip? Let's say yes. Uh, prepare to get dizzy and prepare to get, uh, you know, maybe a little bit motion sick as I take this off. Look, you know, and you always say, why isn't Alex using his stand? Look, I have it today. I'm just not using it, using it uh, right now. We are, um, okay, I'm gonna flip this camera around. There we go. So I'm gonna get up. This, what, this is what I was doing before you guys came in. I put another coat of clear on the floor in the laundry room. I did that this morning. And um, for those of you that remember, this floor was the first floor that I did, and then this turned into a workroom. I, did, I put some wood stain on that side over there, so it kind of blended a little bit e uh, better. So that is there. And for those that are saying ugly curtains, these are 1950s uh, fiberglass curtains, probably hugely flammable. <laughs> but that's the least of my worries right now. Uh, those were original. Uh, they were from the house. So I decided to use it. You guys know what these are? It's not the most disappointing Christmas gift. You know, you don't put these over the fireplace and get nothing. Uh, sock stretchers. I thought that's kind of cute to put in the laundry room. So let's pan over this way. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, there's the door that Austin made. And look, uh, sneak peek already. You can see that I've been painting the trim around it and making it look kind of nice in here. That's the old ironing board from the uh, from the upstairs storage room. I was saving it to bring down to the laundry room. I was um, organizing my cupboards up here. So putting garbage bags and light bulbs and paint and stuff like that, you know, like organizing like people do. And then I opened up this cupboard, like, you know, how a person opens a cupboard, like that. And look, there's pottery in here that I didn't even know that I had. There's pottery still turning up in this house. Look, there's her logo, there, her, not her logo, there's her signature on the bottom. So I've got to go through all this and look, there's all sorts of pots. Like I'm not, I'm telling you, oh, is that a sphere? Hang on. You guys are seeing a little discovery here. Yeah, look, there's one of her spheres. These are like her, one of her signature pieces. Oh, it's got a crack on it. Well, that's really weird. She poked a bunch of holes in this one, but it looks, it's got a, it's got a whammy. It's got a pretty bad crack but there's still stuff turning up in this house. That's one thing you don't wanna have roll away on you. There's still boxes with pottery and stuff um, to explore. Like here's a cupboard that's been here, you know, the whole time I've been here for months and months and stuff keeps turning up. It's just nuts. Um, I, so I've got to clean up the washer and dryer and throw garbage out. That's kind of what I was doing. I was cleaning up and throwing out. And um, if we go at the back door, well, I'm not going to go at the back door, but look, another pile of garbage out there, guys. Ugh. Man, oh man, it just never seems to end. Hmm. 
I, I see that there's a curtain argument happening in the chat form right now where people are saying, the curtains aren't ugly, they're nice. And then other people are saying, the curtains are hideous, get rid of them. Well, I guess, you know, it seems like the decisions I make in this house, it's like 50-50. Half of you gonna like it and half of you gonna hate it. Um, I just hope that half of the people who like it would wanna buy this house. And that's what we gotta do next is actually get this place up for sale. And uh, I'm gonna put you back in the, the little holder here. Oh, if I can do that, there we go. Something like that. There, I'll go back here. Um, the butcher block, somebody's like, get rid of the butcher block. This is how I imagine when somebody says something like, get rid of the, get rid of the butcher block, get it out of here. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why they turn it on. It's like almost like um, uh, Yosemite Sam or something. Jumping Jiminy. Uh, but the butcher block is actually pretty cool. Um, you guys aren't here to see it live in person, but if you were, you'd be going, wow, that's a pretty cool butcher block. At least I hope you would. And uh, those of you that don't like butcher blocks would probably be saying, uh, oh, gross, something probably was killed on there. I like it either way, not the killing part, the fact that it's a cool looking piece of furniture. Uh, Owen Bird is saying, hey, from Saskatchewan, it's great seeing such amazing content from other Canadians. Have a coffee on me. I will. Um, Owen, I will, he gave me five bucks. That's pretty cool. I won't have a coffee on you literally because that would be awkward for both of us. Um, I did have an, uh, another guy named Alex drop by and visit me today. So what tradition, and I didn't ask last time because uh, last time I put it on there on the live feed, I said, it always seems like um, people always bring cookies and snacks and stuff. And then a guy showed up today. Oh, thank you, Matt. Uh, a guy showed up today and he said, um, uh, my name's Alex. And I was like, well, that's weird because <laughs> that's my name too. And he had a, a paper bag full of like chocolate bars and chips and stuff. And I think he was expecting uh, maybe Josh and Dakota or something to be there, but I didn't have anybody to share with uh, that I brought out with me, but I did uh, manage to share with uh, Carmen and his daughter and his worker. They were out painting the outside of the house today. And it is, um, it was nice to be able to hand that stuff around. So thank you other Alex for bringing by the bag of goodies from uh, Lloyd Minster. I was a long way to go just to drop in and say hi. And I said to him, you drove like, I don't know, what's that probably like a two hour drive or something. And um, he said, uh, yeah, you just decided to pop in and see if I was here. Good thing I was here. So that's, uh, that's really, really, really good. Um, somebody's asking, will I be selling the house furnished? Yes. Um, now some of you were saying, um, why are you putting furniture in the home? Well, part of it is, um, some of the stuff I thought should stay with the house, like the piano and that. And I thought, uh, there are people out there who would look at this as a bed and breakfast opportunity. I mean, there's a lot of people that know this house and a lot of people are aware of it. So, uh, um, it would probably be an opportunity to do a bed and breakfast. There's a golf course like two blocks from here. So there are reasons for this house to be furnished if somebody's gonna buy it and, and either rent it or use it or do an Airbnb or something. At least it has furniture in it. Um, the other thing is when you're staging a house for sale, it's nice so, so people can kind of envision what the layout could be. And I'm not saying that this isn't how, like if I really put my effort into it and had an unlimited budget, I promise you I would do a much better job decorating. Um, I know I have improved it with the curtains apparently, but. Uh, when you go into a house and it's completely empty, it's a little bit more difficult to sell than a house that has furniture in it. So that's the idea that you buy the house, you get the stuff, and if they don't want the stuff, or if they're like, hey, can we reduce the cost if you take the stuff out, then I'll just sell it locally or do something with it. So uh, we'll probably do that. Uh, yeah, did I, somebody said, did you show Alex a house after he drove all the way out there? Uh, no, I'm like, no, buddy, thanks for the candy. And I kicked him to the curb. Uh, no, I gave him a full tour of the house. Uh, and then I ate his candy. <laughs> I don't eat like a rabbit, by the way. That's not, I wouldn't eat a chocolate bar that fast. That would be horrific. Um, what is the cement dome with the problem? Oh, that video that I did when I was out, um, looking, uh, through the scrapyard and the farm, that wasn't here. Not every video I do is at the Potter house here. That was actually my mother-in-law's farm. They've been there for like a hundred years and we did that video. Um, basically, I was, we were out there for Easter. They were doing good wholesome Easter stuff and I was out there digging for treasures and <laughs> looking for antiques. Um, let's see, I'm gonna try to answer, will we ever meet the rest of Mary's family? Um, well, you guys, uh, on the last video, you might've seen uh, Ryan was on the video. Um, that is Mary's uh, great, great nephew, I guess it would be. So her, Mary's dad was his great, great, grand, great, great, great grandfather. Uh, we were able to return some of the war medals that I found upstairs last week to him. So very happy that we could do that. 
Um, oh, metal detector video, you guys are asking about that. I did bring the metal detector with me this weekend, and I'm hoping that I'll have time to do that tomorrow before I go. I'm really anxious and really uh, eager to try and get this house wrapped up. Uh, and like I said, there's a realtor who's supposed to come and take pictures of the inside at least tomorrow. So uh, I don't know how good it'll look if I'm you know, out there in the front yard and they pull up. I'm, I'll be like Cousin Eddie from Christmas Vacation. Hi, folks, as I'm digging holes in the front yard, except not with like the hat with ear flaps and like dumping sewage in the drain. Uh, but that's how I feel when I'm out there doing stuff I shouldn't be doing. <laughs> Basically turn into Cousin Eddie. Um, okay, I'm gonna go into the auction. So a lot of people are actually asking about the auction results. Kastner Auctions, the auction ends on the 30th. I was incorrect, does not end on the uh, 28th. The auction ends on the 30th. And, um, all of this, so if you want to own a piece of pottery, if you want to own a piece of something from the house, there is an auction. You go to kauctions.ca and um, you're going to see that uh, there's a whole bunch of her artwork and her pottery and all kinds of stuff up there. And that ends on the 30th. So you can go in, you can place your bids now. They will ship anywhere in the world. Um, they will get that out there. And um, <laughs> somebody's telling me to get cough drops. I know I probably do need cough drops. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you for posting the, the website there. If you scroll through the comments, you can see. Um, <clears throat> the auction is going to end on the 30th, and there are quite a few, um, you know, there's quite a few interesting uh, pieces on there. And there are still some that don't have bids, and there's a lot of pieces around $150, $200. Keep in mind, the prices that you see on the auction are in Canadian funds. So you already get like a pretty big discount by the fact that it's just in Canadian alone. So if you're looking at the funds online, those are Canadian funds and um, yeah, save you a little bit of money from buying here. Uh, hello from the basement of, oh, hey, somebody's like my, where are you? My cross the street neighbor, five one. Well, I think, okay, hang on. If, if that's the house right across the street, I'm waving at your house, basement people who are watching possibly. <laughs> so this is what I'm doing. If you're like, I wonder what the crazy guy across the street's up to right now. Well, I'm here and you're watching me over there, which is kind of crazy, but cool at the same time. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, oh yeah, thank you. A dollar Canadian is 75 cents US, 25% discount. I should just advertise that. Everything at auction is 25% off if you're in the United States. If you're in Europe, it's even better. Um, the house, I hope the house, Crystal's saying, I hope the house has a bidding war. I hope it does too. What I really need, so we are gonna be listing the house somewhere around um, 325,000 Canadian. And, um, oh, thank you, sorry, if I missed three super chats, I apologize. I'm, I'm talking and pointing and, and hand talking, so I don't mean to uh, be distracted, but thank you so much for all your chats, the super chats. Um, we are looking at listing the house for 325, which is basically less than what um, a 1980s bungalow sells for here in town. So I think somebody's gonna get a heck of a deal. I basically made it a new house. Uh, what did we do on this place? Uh, the roof already had been done, so the roof was done. Um, so it's got a new roof, new furnace, new hot water tank, new plumbing. Uh, hey, Ann, there we go. <laughs> um, what, what else I do? Electrical, new panel, new paint inside and out, new gutters, new windows, everywhere. There's windows everywhere. Um, this actually house has a, a lot of nice natural light. No matter what time of day it is, there's, uh, there's a lot going on. Actually, uh, 325000 for uh, uh, somebody said, a lot. that's so funny. Some people are like, that's crazy cheap. And other people are like, that's expensive. It depends on where you are, I guess. But uh, where we are right now, 325 Canadian is about what this house is probably worth, somewhere around there. And if it does sell, that'll give me some money that I can actually go and buy my little general store that I've been talking about. And that's the goal really, uh, is to try and do that. So hopefully we'll get um, this place listed in the next little while here. And we are, um, oh no, actually, so somebody's asking right now, uh, Luz Garcia, will there be stipulations regarding the property being considered or soon to be considered a landmark? No, uh, because I've not filed the paperwork yet and I'll tell you why. I want the house to be registered as a historic site and I am, getting a brass placard for the front of the house um, that says it is Potter's house and that Mary lived here. Uh, I will be getting that made up next week when I go back. So there will be a brass plate. Um, and we are um, going to, what was I talking about? I was talking about um, the house. This is the bad thing. I'm like so scatterbrained tonight, probably because I'm talking nonstop. Um, oh, the, the house, the designation on the house. Thank you, yes. I reminded myself. I don't know if somebody's gonna remind me right now, but I reminded myself. We have not submitted the paperwork yet, 
um, because it might create some challenges for the next people if they want to do some sort of renovations to it. Um, you have to go through the government and you have to um, get approval from them on what you do and don't do. And the reason why I didn't submit it yet is that I wanted to do all this work and there's no way I'd be able to get this house done in a couple months if I had to wait for approval and paperwork. If you go through the government, sometimes that can take a really long time. Um, hey, thanks very much, guys. Uh, so there, thank you, Jody. There is, um, yeah, there is a lot of reasons why you'd want it to be a historic site. A, it protects the property, but also you have access to grants. So you can, um, if you need to do renovations down the road, the government will actually give you assistance. They'll give you money to help out with that. And um, that'll be a benefit for the new owner. And I did find out it does qualify. Um, so that'd be great. So a lot of people ask about Pickle Rick. Well, first off, my buddy Pickle Rick, who's upstairs hanging out right now, and he's just always in such a great mood. He's like, <laughs> that's like Pickle Rick all the time. He's like happy because he's got a jar of pickles. Have you ever looked that happy and been holding a jar of pickles in your life? Like, ah, I don't even know if, if somebody gave me like a jar full of like, uh, you know, quarters or something, I'd be like, ah, oh, you're cool. I could, you know, it's a bunch of quarters. Apparently that guy likes his pickle. Pickle Rick is like, ah, for pickles. Uh, he's upstairs hanging out and I'm gonna take that. Pickle Rick is gonna go uh, to Josh. I offered him to Josh a while back and I've gotta be a man of my word, but I'm gonna keep him around the house until I'm pretty much done here. Uh, we are, oh, oh, hey, thanks for uh, subscribing, guys. Um, let's see, oh, uh, Bandana Grandma says, thanks for showing us what integrity looks like. Well, uh, it's my it's my pleasure. Um, oh, yes, and somebody's answering a question on the stained glass window. Yes, my aunt is very close to finishing the stained glass. Um, I only have two panels, though, so I'm really debating what we're going to do with that. Um, the cement dome wasn't a cement dome that I was standing on in that picture from uh, Instagram. For those of you who looked, I put a picture of my, my feet these feet <laughs> with my red shoes, I put that up and that was actually an overturned 1950s or I don't know, it was an old satellite dish anyway, it was an aluminum one, probably from the 70s or 80s maybe. Um, so that's what was going on. But uh, Mary Jeffries, I'm sorry, I saw she gave up on something. I'm not sure what you were asking. Well, uh, I apologize. I'm trying to answer uh, as many questions as I can. Uh, let's see here. So stained glass frames, hang them in the window. We could do that. Um, it would be pretty cool. Um, if you guys are in Edmonton, yes, please do come by and visit us at the shop because that's where I am sometimes, but not today because I'm here. Uh, once this all settles down the house, I'm there more often. Um, we're going to be doing an open house at the Potter's house, by the way. So for those of you that are wanting to come by and visit the, the house, if you happen to be in the Edmonton or Pro this town is Provost that we're in right now. Uh, Provost or Edmonton or somewhere in the nearby area and you want to come to an open house I will be advertising when that'll be happening But we're gonna do like a come one come all which could be kind of nuts I don't think I'll have enough cheese cheese and crackers for everybody um, Maybe I'll cut them into tiny little thin slices and they'll be like oh man this guy's a cheapskate um, But yeah, let's see uh, Somebody says is it true Dustin is interested in the buying the house? Hey, if you're actually interested in buying the house, I had a lady from Columbia um call me the, not call me. She uh, wrote me the other day and she wanted to buy the house and use it as an Airbnb. And, um, she never, I mean, I don't think that came to fruition, obviously, because I'm still, I own the house, but there are all sorts of opportunities, I think, for either creating an artist retreat out here or, um, you know, having it, it'd be a lovely home to live in too. But I think because some people know about it, it would be great for people to come and actually hang out here and stay here. And you, you could stay, come stay in the Potter's house. And then, uh, yeah, people can come hang out and be like, oh, this is where Josh hammered this in, or this is where Pickle Rick was, or... <laughs> yeah, uh, you buy Pickle Rick shirt. <laughs> okay, you know, I could probably do something like that. My goodness, okay. Uh, I didn't mean to make a pickle advertisement famous. And that thing was in the house, by the way. Um, when, I, when I got the house, it was all folded up. Uh, beware of those people calling from other countries saying they want to make it an Airbnb. It's a scam. Well, I wouldn't actually sell it to someone unless there was actual real money in the bank and all that. I wouldn't sign it over for anything like that. Um, so guys, uh, I am going to be filming Well, I have already been filming episode, whatever the next one is. I can't remember what we're on now. Episode, whatever. There's only going to be a couple more of these left, honestly, because you guys are probably going to get sick of this whole series. Um, but we, here's what I have planned. We are, um, I'm planning on revisiting how I shot the very first video, the very first one when I came through the house and trying to replicate the same um, photography that I did when I, the same videography, I guess, but do it as the house as it is now. 
um, and flip from before and afters. I'm really excited to edit it. I think it's gonna be a really cool video so you guys can see what this house um, looks like and, and remind you what the house looked like before. And if you don't remember what it looked like before, you can also cheat and go back and look at episode one, uh, episode one of the Potter's House or episode two and be like, wow, this place was pretty crazy. But I can't wait to show you the progress and how things are uh, coming along. And like I said earlier in the video, if you guys just caught the live feed now, I'm still finding pottery as I'm live chatting with you now. There's stuff turning up. Um, so lots of work for me to do tonight. I should probably uh, go and do some work at some point and, uh, and finish up. But I've been at it since 6.30 this morning and I don't even know what time it is now. It's late. It's probably the sun's going down. It's got to be around 7 o'clock or so. This is bad. I don't even know what time it is. This is my world right now. I wake up and I just work, work, work. Um, so thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, appreciate you, you guys watch our other stuff too. We are planning more adventures and more crazy things. Um, oh, somebody keeps asking, when was the last time Mary was in the house? When was the last time Mary was in the house? Mary was in the house last nine years ago. And apparently what happened is the furnace, which stopped working for me um, in winter, had stopped working for her. But because it was so difficult to get to, the furnace guys couldn't get here for like a week or so because uh, they had to clear a path. And in the meantime, what had happened is the pipes had frozen in the house. And once the pipes froze in the house and burst, they basically had to, um, she had to leave the home. And that's what happened and that's what ma made her uh, leave the house. Actually, do you wanna hear a funny Mary story? I don't know if I've shared this one or not. So I'm gonna tell you a little story that I heard from her kids. Um, apparently in one of the last um, times she was living in the home, um, Mary was, uh, <laughs> she, she pulled out of her back, she parked in the backyard. So at the back door, she pulled out of the backyard and she, hits the garage that's behind the house, which is not cool to like hit somebody's house. But then she just drove away like it was nothing. So they're like, the neighbors were like, it's not super happy about that. <laughs> As who would be if you had just had your house hit. Um, so she she drove, you know, and she was a little lady driving a big old, I think it was a grand marquee that she had and she drove it down to Main Street. And then she uh, careened into the side of a car as she was parking and just got out and went and did her shopping like normal. And, uh, and got back in. Well, in the meantime, the RCMP had been called because A, she's just hit a garage and then she hit a car on the road. And uh, <laughs> uh, and so the, the RCMP came back and I don't know if the RCMP officer is watching, he might still be the guy that lives here in town. Uh, he followed her back to the house and said, ma'am, I'm very sorry. We're gonna have to take your car keys. And so <laughs> Mary said, I don't think so. And uh, he punched the, the police officer in the, in the jaw in the bottom. So uh, I guess um, the kids get a phone call uh, later that night and uh, they said, you know, is this Mary's kids? And they said, yes. They said, well, this is officer so-and-so and, and, um, and we have your mother in custody right now. And they said, what? There's no way. This has got to be a joke. This is no way. Uh, like she at the time was like 94 years old or something like that. And, uh, and so they said, uh, yeah, we don't think it's really that funny because she just assaulted a police officer. <laughs> anyway, I guess they let her out uh, because she wasn't in jail when I met her. But uh, never try, here's the moral of that story, never take a feisty 94 year old woman's keys from her um, at her property because she will punch you whether you're a cop or not right in the chin. So, and she was a good like five feet tall. So with that, that would have just bust him right in the chops, I'm sure. <laughs> and apparently he said, yeah, and it hurt too. Um, so Mary, oh, bless you, Mary. What a, what a, what a spirit, what an amazing woman. Uh, <laughs> you know, so uh, she was a feisty lady and, uh, I love the chance that I had to get to meet her and, uh, oh yeah, RCMP, by the way, is the police, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, but they don't ride horse around, I mean, unless it's a parade or something now anyway. So here I'm talking like you guys know what I'm talking about. Mounties, you might've seen them, Dudley do right? you know, with the red, the, the fancy red outfit and that. So that's what she knocked one of those guys. Um, yeah, she pulled the Zsa Gabor. Uh, and I've been busy, uh, speaking of criminals, I've been, uh, well, she's not a criminal. She just, you know, was a little upset. But I was um, doing some cleaning and, and organizing and I felt very much like Martha Stewart here today because I was just, you know, trying to get my, make the house look all nice and, and pleasant and everything. Um, so there you have it. Uh, I've got to save some stuff for the, actually, I don't think I really gave much away for the, the actual video that I'm going to be doing. Um, but stay tuned, there will be another video coming soon. There will be um, a before and after video, which is gonna be really cool. I don't know why I'm pointing a lot. That's what Josh does. He'll be, he'll be talking, he'll just point. He'll be like, 
yeah, that thing over there, that's cool. But he'll point for like a good minute before he actually starts talking. So be like, that's dope. <laughs> oh, Josh. Look, I'm even talking about him here. He's not even here. Um, and yes, uh, Josh is definitely a, a friend and so is his brother, Dakota. So I, I miss those guys. It's weird being here by myself. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, check out my wife's channel too. It's just under Melissa Archbold. So you'll probably see that there. And uh, thank you very much for tuning in this evening um, on today's episode of chatting. Uh, for me sitting on a stool, well, I, I'm not, I mean, not like a, um, it's a piano stool. I didn't have an accident. It's a stool. Hang on. It's, it's a piano stool I'm sitting on. Uh, I wonder if there was ever sold piano stools and they had to bring little ones in to show people what they look like. <laughs> I wonder if you'd be like, would you like to see one of my stool samples? Like that would be the hardest door-to-door -door salesman job there is, the guy who sells piano stools and has miniature ones to show people. Either way, um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> so guys, have a wonderful evening. Uh, for my family and friends that are on right now, I apologize if I didn't say hi, but I'm saying hi to you now. Heather, happy birthday. Josh, happy birthday. Melissa, um, it's not your birthday yet, but it will be soon. Melissa's birthday is on the 28th, so happy early birthday to my wife out there too. So guys, thank you so much. Check out Kastner Auctions, kauctions.ca. Um, and yeah, we'll see y'all soon. More live feeds coming at some point, uh, but the next one will be an actual full normal video with music and lights and can't look jazz hands again. Woo! Uh, now I'm a haunted ghost doing jazz hands. That's what I would be. If I, <laughs> if I was a ghost, I'd be the ghost with jazz hands. Woo! And they'd be like, well, that's not scary at all. That's just a guy who has jazz hands who's, who's now deceased. Um, but have a lovely night, everybody. Um, much appreciated. And uh, thank you so much for watching our program.